guys. Um, got a couple more hydraulic cylinders to rebuild today. Um, but this one goes on a chisel pile that I've got. I'll show you here in just a second. And uh, I, I have no idea who made the, uh, the chisel pile. There's no brand or model number or anything on it. So um, I can't really give you like, a, you know, this is the manufacturer's part number and stuff like that. And I, I've rebuilt a lot of other hydraulic cylinders. So this is kind of an interesting case. So um, my tractor is not actually big enough to pull that plow. They got left behind here on my property when I bought it. So I sort of inherited it with the land, you know, bought it with the place. My neighbor's got a bigger tractor though that can handle it. And so she was one that was actually pulling it uh, when we had a few different problems with it. And not her fault, she's a fine operator, she's just old. Um, but uh, she misdiagnosed both of the problems. And uh, so I thought it'd be interesting to, instead of focusing on just the rebuild of the cylinder, talk about um, the problems that we had and, and kind of show how that works in some theory of operation of hydraulics. So um, if you guys like this video, you find it interesting, let me know and I, I can try to make more like it. But um, yeah, some sort of hydraulic theory today. So let's get right into it. All right, so here it is. Um, fairly big, it's about 24 foot, something like that. And uh, yeah, so this hydraulic cylinder, I've already got taken off of it. Um, first problem that we encountered though, was that whenever she tried, so this cylinder and the one that's missing here, this is what picks it up on the wheels so that you can turn or drive down the road or whatever gets the, the actual plow out of the ground, right? And uh, whenever she was trying to pick it up though, it would only pick up one side and not the other. And then once that side was completely picked up, then the other one would move. And so she told me that she needed to top off her hydraulic fluids because it wasn't working right. Um, not the problem at all, you see, because the way hydraulics work, you can see these are fed to over here just to these T's. See that? So it's a single source of pressure that's just teed off with no check valves or any sort of a regulation in between them to the cylinder here and to, you know, to this side. And the way that works is whenever you put, uh, you apply pressure to it, whichever cylinder has the least amount of load will move first until it maxes at its stroke. Then once that stroke is maxed out, then the pressure increases, goes to the other side, and then that one will raise. And that's just how hydraulic cylinders work. But if you've ever used a tractor, you know that whenever you pick up on, you know, a front end loader or, or this thing, they always work at the same time. And that's because of this shaft right here, right? That is mechanically coupling those together so that if that one moves, this one has to move. Essentially, you're splitting the load between the, both of them, right? They're sharing it rather, not splitting it, but you're sharing the load. So if, if this one has less load on it, just because maybe the, uh, the ground is softer over here, so it's easier for the the cylinder to pull the, the teeth up through the ground or whatever the case may be. And then this one um, is in, you know, it's, it's heavier for whatever reason. Then that coupling right there will actually connect them together, um, the, that loading, right? And make them come up at the same time. So the problem that she was having, and I can see this has gotten loose again, but it sheared the bolts off. And so this thing was just turning and it wasn't actually coupling them together anymore. So. Um, I've got some new bolts to replace um, all four of those because and I hadn't really come across these before but these use what are called plow bolts I'll show you the new ones so it'll be easier to understand but it's kind of a mix between like a countersunk head bolt and a uh, carriage head bolt um, it's got a square in there so here it is this is what's called a plow bolt so it's got a square on it like a carriage head but it's countersunk no um, no not, nothing on the back side for getting a wrench or anything on you don't need it because it's stuck in that square hole and then you just need one wrench for this side and then went ahead and got uh, heavy profile nuts a little bit a little bit stouter and this is a this happens to be a 7 16 14. you need one wrench kind of handy um and it was actually this one that broke well it was up here but uh so we replaced it with just a normal bolt which has been done to all or both of those and then one over here it's the wrong bolt which is part of partially why it broke but obviously they replaced them because they broke at some point. But, but anyway, if you have hydraulics that one side is moving and then the other side, that's the problem. That's just the way hydraulics work unless they're tied together. So it's not actually a hydraulic issue. It's a mechanical coupling issue. Second problem and the reason why this hydraulic cylinder is off and same thing. Uh, she told me that she needed to top off her hydraulic fluids because it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't pick the, the wheels up off the ground. And 
thought, well, that doesn't really make sense because in order for that to be the case, you would have had to have uh, lost like, you know, all of your fluid. You would, you would definitely notice that and be a huge leak somewhere. Um, so, you know, what's actually going on? So came out here and looked at it. And if she revved the tractor up, she'd get it to pick up and it would immediately bleed off and go back down. So I knew exactly what the problem was as soon as I saw that. It's not related to the hydraulic fluid at all. It's actually an internal leak inside of this hydraulic cylinder. And I've got the other one apart so I can get new seals ordered for it. But there's no oil coming out of the machine though, right? The leak is 100% internal. So it's just leaking past the uh, piston in there. And let's go back to the hay barn and I'll show you. I've got it apart. I'll show it to you. All right, so this is the piston that came out of that cylinder. Here's the rod here, it's stuck in the vise. This just connects right there. This is the piston seal that was in there. So you see that was a problem. It's just completely falling apart. The seal's just old. Now I'll tell you one thing that's interesting, this style of seal is uh, relatively modern. And so that machine's not quite as old as I thought. I figured it was probably like a, I don't know, 80s, 70s, something like that. Uh, model, but looking at this, I would say it's actually probably either a early 2000s or um, 90s model. But anyway, so this piston seal right here, this is what's supposed to hold pressure on one side or the other of your your hydraulic cylinder, which is what moves it back and forth, right? Well, it's obviously destroyed, so that was the problem in that case. So a lot of people probably already know this, but you see this is a it's a half inch hose. We got a uh, dash eight right there, though. A lot of times, uh, hydraulic components, hoses and fittings and whatnot, are uh, sold in a dash size. And so that actually means eight sixteenths, right? Dash eight, which would be, you know, half inch. You see it over here as well. Dash eight. All right. So I have this hydraulic cylinder off and out of the way. And then I moved this guy here. Uh, so do I get to these? So that's the uh, fly bolts in question. Now you can see though this this one I said it's not actually the right kind of bolt. Just replace it real quick. Now in theory. Part one at a time, I should be able to get the new one in without too much fuss, just like that. And then on um, these, this is red Loctite uh, 271, high strength. I don't normally put this on stuff, but with these, the only way that these ever come back off is if you're replacing them. And the reason you replace them is because they broke off and they're laying out in the field somewhere. Um, so, that being said, we don't want them to come loose because that would probably cause them to break sooner. So, red lock pad it is. And we'll put them on. This one. Got a weird stack of lock. Not good. And I already did the other side. Man, get this thing off. Fought me the whole way. It's hard. But I got.
just tighten until it stops turning. Uh, that may be too much, but uh, that battery is almost dead, so it's not really strong as it normally is anyway. And uh, this is that freak impact wrench that Bosch makes, by the way. It's cool. It's got a hex head thing here that you can put like normal screwdriver bits in. Then it's got a half inch anvil that you can use for sockets. So um, that being said, that's it's really handy. It's not the strongest impact out there. So it may look like I'm really whooping them on, but they're not just crazy tight. You know, the reason to take this off of there is just to be able to get to it. It's just tight right there. And then, yeah. Uh, so with these, you know, actually, now I'm looking at it with the proper um, bolts and stuff in there. I could probably get those out of there without taking this off next time. Uh, but I couldn't get those other bolts out of there. I don't think. You know, I didn't actually try it, though. I just took it off. The other one came apart a lot easier, so. Okay, plow bolts replaced. So this ought to be good for a while. And I bought these from McMaster Car and they came in a 25 pack. Oh, there's your number there. You can read that. So anyway, I got lots of extras. Same thing with these nuts. If you're interested. With master car set of 25 heavy nuts plow bolts that is done all right so got this cylinder off and i got the other one off the other day and i've already taken it apart to figure out what seals i need to get and i'll show you how to disassemble all this in just a minute um but the the next step is since i don't know who makes this i have no idea what the model number is part numbers anything like that we'll just have to figure out what the seals are just by measuring um the seals themselves and the spaces that they fit into and we'll figure out what we need um, to get ordered to replace them. So what's cool about these tie rod cylinders is that this is just a piece of pipe. Um, so there's a joint there and then here, and then these two cast caps. And this one's a little bit different because both of your, your um, inlets and outlets, you know, they're, they're both up here and then there's a tube. One of these, I don't remember, I think it's this one, um, is just ported through this to the bottom of the uh, cylinder right here. That's a little bit different, but other than that, this is all pretty standard for any kind of tie rod cylinder. You just take these four um, tie rods off, just tap this with a hammer, they come out. This will be full of oil, so I have a bucket to catch it. Um, make kind of a mess on my table, I'll show you. But uh, it kind of got away from me when it come apart. But uh, yeah, I, I was gonna show you on this how cool these are. The super simple kind of quick disconnect thing to take apart, but this one took me like an hour to get off. It was a real pain. It wasn't cool at all, so. Um, the way it's supposed to work, though, is you just push this thing down, and then this pin comes out, you know, and it's grooved. And anyway, this one, for whatever reason, it was a real, real nuisance to get apart. And then same thing to put it back together. You're supposed to be able to just push that, just like that. Kind of cool. Uh, I've never seen one set up like that before, and I, I thought it was really neat until I tried to take it apart, and it really sucked. But uh <laughs> Uh, some had it in like a weird bind. Not sure. The first one was real easy, just the way it's supposed to be. <clears throat> so, all right. Now, you got your cylinder part. You got all your pieces, right? So the next step is you got to figure out what these are in order to replace them. So start with the O-rings. And anybody out there who's a mechanic, you know how to do this. It's, it's not rocket science. It's really simple. And you don't need a, a tool this fancy either. I just happen to have one at work that I could borrow and it's easy. So your O-rings, basically you really only need like two dimensions. You need the thickness. 
So 95 thousandths. Can you guys see that? Let me move this. There you go. So 95 thousandths. Now remember, these are all going to be like nominal sizes, right? So 95 thousandths, that's 332 thickness. And you're going to need, depending on who you buy these from, either an OD or an ID. And uh, so we can measure the ID here. But remember, it's an O-ring, so you can stretch it, right? And then, you know, that's not correct. So you got to be real careful measuring O-rings. Um, and you can try to do the OD as well. Same type of thing. But something that's a little bit easier... You just take whatever it goes on, which is this, these go on this tube right here, right? And uh, ran out of rags the other day when I was taking this apart. So we can just measure the service that this goes on. Okay, so we got 0.573. Uh, 573. So that's a little bit bigger than 9 16th. And normally you would want your O-ring to have a bit of a compression fit on there. So that's probably like a 9 16 um, ID. Okay. So 332 and then 9 16 I said I already wrote this down. So 572 is what I measured at the other day. So we'll look that up and we'll figure out, whoops, stay here, baby. Figure out what that is. Now O-rings are generally going to be sized. Um, you, you can find old ones that are sized like actually in inches of the ID or OD, or sometimes I'll have both, and then the thickness. But um, the modern way of um, naming these is just with a, a dash system. It's different than the dash system on the hydraulics, but this one will be a dash two something, I believe, which would be, or no, I'm sorry, a dash one. Um, so this would be like a one, uh, probably like 20, something like that. And uh, that the one designates a uh, 332, a zero as the first number will designate 16th of an inch. And this one, I can already tell you, is an eighth inch because I've measured it already. And so it will be a two. So, yeah, 137. Remember, 125 is an eighth of an inch. So it's 10 thou over. But again, these need a slight compression fit. We're talking about nominal sizes here. And then that one. And that's what goes on these end caps here. So once again, we will take a, uh, a measurement, we'll base our ID measurement off of this, right? Now, with this, I don't know if you could tell, but I can't get down here to the middle to properly measure across that. And so that's saying, you know, 326, but it's not. Um, so what we can do is come out here and measure this, which is saying three and a half, basically. And then we can measure the... Uh, thickness of this let me do it up here we can measure how thick this gap is or how deep that is right so i'm getting 108 thousandths so back to this what i say three and a half yeah more or less so three and a half minus 216 and that's going to be the id surface that that sits on um which i have here as three points um, uh, call it three and a quarter. So 3.252 uh, is what that works out to. So, okay, easy enough. That should be all we need to be able to find those O-rings. Like I said, there'll probably be a, a dash number. I think this will be like a, oh, uh, probably like a 230, 235, somewhere in there. And this, I think will be like a, a 120 or something, maybe. We'll see. And then these, this is kind of interesting. This is not actually a seal. You'll notice it's split. That's normal. It's not broken. This is what's called a O-ring backup. And this particular one is a Teflon variety. There's a few different kinds, but they use these on higher pressure systems and it increases the capacity or the, the oh no, the pressure capability of the O-ring, having that backup on there. So one of these for each of these smaller O-rings. Whenever you go to buy these, you don't need to measure these to spec them out. They're standardized based on the size of the O-ring you buy. If you get on somewhere like McMaster, there's usually an option to buy O-ring backups and it'll be for, you know, the different sizes of O-rings. So if you know, once you know the size of this O-ring, you just buy a Teflon backup for that O-ring. Um, these bigger ones didn't have one. Uh, but that's all those are. Not seals. And generally speaking, as long as they're not damaged, these can be reused. They're just kind of, a uh, 
like I said, they're just a backup. And these ones appear to be in fine shape. So I think that I will probably just reuse them and not bother ordering new ones, but we'll see. They're pretty cheap, so I might just replace them. Um, you know, we're this far torn into it, might as well. Hate to have to take it all back apart it's for something silly like that. Okay, so next, let's do piston. So first dimension we're gonna need is your width here. Okay, 409. And then we will need this. Once again, I can't actually measure that, but we can measure the depth of this groove, right? Which is 0.186. And then this, which once again is just under three and a half. And so then we can figure out our ID. It's just three and a half minus, uh, what did I say? 186, so that would be uh, 360. Uh, 372. 0.372. I've already done this. Three and a half piston OD. And I said 178 deep, so I didn't bother writing all that down. This one, I'm not quite sure. We'll all have to look around. Uh, I'll probably get this from Hercules Seals. Um, but those are all the dimensions you should need to be able to find it. And like I said, this is a... I forget what this is called. I'll tell you whenever I... Um, Get the parts in and, and we go over putting it all back together. There's a name for this style of seal, though. I just don't remember what it is off the top of my head. Now, another thing to note is that there is a backup ring behind that. And that's like a stretchy. It's just like a big rubber band sort of deal. Um, it should come with the, uh, the seal whenever you buy it. But we'll be replacing that as well. And that leaves us with just these two things. Now, on the outside of the cylinder, this is a rods uh, wiper. This is not actually a pressure seal. So I've seen people before take an entire cylinder part, replace this, put it back together, and then it was still leaking and they were real disappointed and couldn't figure out why. But it's because this is the seal. It goes down inside of there. This is just to keep crap from getting pulled into the seal, into the back of it. Because the way this works, it's kind of hard to see. Hang on, let me get a Sharpie. Okay, made a little sort of a drawing. So this is your seal, roughly. I'm not an artist, so forgive me here. But these little lips, now this one has an O-ring. Uh, does it? Uh, maybe not an O-ring, but it's got something stuffed in the middle of it as a backup to keep that, to keep these sprung apart. Um, but the, So the way this works, though, is that uh, when your rod comes in, it actually pushes up against this seal, and then this side is pushed up against the little pocket that it mounts in, right? And then as pressure comes in, this isn't drawn very well, it would actually it'd be kind of a gap here that the hydraulic wheel can get to it. But when this side is pressurized, it folds these out against its sealing surfaces, right? But on the rod's uh, path back, if there was any crap on here, it can drag it through here. And because this is kind of facing the wrong direction, it can pull it into your, your oil, which can damage the seal, and you get stuff in your oil. That's not good. And so this thing, this is a rod wiper. This goes the opposite direction and it just hugs up against your uh, piston rod or cylinder rod here as it's coming in. That way it can't drag crap in there and damage your seal. And um, that's all that's for. So it is important, but this is not actually a sealing surface. And then on this one, it's really important when you put these in, and I'll probably talk about this again, they have to face the right direction. So if the pressure comes from this side, right? So this is the rod sticking out of the cylinder, and this is you know, facing towards the cylinder. This is where the pressure comes from. You have to put them in this way. If you flip that around and put it in upside down like that with the pressure on this side, it's just going to fold this thing in, the pressure wheel, and just push oil straight through. It's going to leak. So really important to put these in the correct way. There are several different styles of these, different uh, kind of shapes and whatnot. And honestly, it's not super important as long as the sizes fit and it's rated for the pressure and the type of oil that you're using. Um, I will match this as closely as I can because that's what... Uh, whoever designed and built the cylinder thought that it needed, but there's a lot of different styles of these and honestly most will work as long as they fit in the space and they're rated for whatever they're sealing and the pressure that they're sealing it at. And then the same for this, as long as it fits all the specs, it's not hugely important that it's the exact same uh, seal and it won't be the same brand because I'm just going to buy it from a, 
a wholesaler, right? So it's not necessarily going to be the same brand. It may look a little bit different. Could be a different color, might be a slightly different material. None of that's important as long as it's rated for the pressure that you're using and the, the whatever uh, media is being pressurized. So in this case, just, oh, standard tractor hydraulic oil. Um, okay, so now this one, um, I may have to get a few other measurements off of once I start looking. But the first thing you're going to need to know is your ID, or I'm sorry, your OD, because that's the pocket that it fits into, right? So that has to be correct, otherwise it won't fit in the pocket. And then on this one, you'll need to know your ID as well, which instead of measuring the ID, I always just measure the shaft. So on Hercules ceiling, I think these will typically say that they're made for, uh, you know, X shaft size. And this was a one and an eighth. So you can see that's actually a little bit smaller than what the shaft is, but the same like the O-ring, these are designed to, uh, to always be in a little bit of compression. Yeah, see so bigger down here on the bottom. And that's because it has a lip on it, opposite of this, but this little edge here, this little lip, it just stays nice and tight right up against your rod. Um, and then your thickness on this, because it needs to sit down in its pocket. Now you don't need the thickness of this whole thing, right? You need the thickness of this part. This is the part that sits in the pocket. Okay, so this one happens to be you know, 186, 187, something like that. So rod wiper. And then the same thing with your rod seal. All right, now this, you need the entire, the overall thickness, 195 in this case. Um, so what is that, uh, 532? And then, and that's important because there's a, um, it's in the other one. It, it may be sort of obvious why that's important, right? But there's a, a groove machined into this thing. Can you see that right there? There's a groove in there, right? Right here. So it has to fit in that groove, right? Uh, and then once again, your ID will be sized off your shaft, or the rod rather, that's going through there. And then you'll want your OD as well. Now you do need both OD and ID on these. It's inside and outside diameter, or you know, vice versa, whatever. Um, and then, and they're rubber again, so they're, they're squishy. So you gotta be kind of careful as you're measuring them not to overdo the pressure just enough to kind of hold it in there okay and i'm measuring this around the base not around the lips that time this time i'll try to measure it here it should be yeah a little over one and a half so this is nominally this one's a, a one and a half inch and they are nominal sizes when you go to look these up it's not gonna you know it's not gonna be in thousands they may have an actual um, you know, measurement in thousands of what it actually measures, but it can be a little bit different. You just need to know that it's made for a one and a half inch or a one and an eighth inch um, rod. That's what it's designed to seal against. And then depending on the material and the design, that can change just a little bit. And then kind of the same for this, um, the OD of this thing, it, it's going to be real uh, um, close, but there it's a nominal size. So this one's going to be one and a half. So there you go. Now that we know all of that, we should be able to get online um, just about anywhere that sells hydraulic seals um, or on the phone if you prefer that or in person, I suppose, if you had a, if you had a place. Um, if you had a place, you'd probably just take them all this, tell them what you need. But uh, it's more expensive that way. If you just <laughs> buy them yourself, you might have to buy like a five pack of each of these things, but there's two cylinders and each one has two of these and two of these. So you need four of these for the entire machine and same thing don't forget you know when you're buying these buy doubles because there's two cylinders and if one of them is leaking uh, my advice would be to just rebuild both of them um, that symptom that i described earlier where it wouldn't hold wouldn't hold the machine up that could be caused by either one or both of these pistons having failed the seal here could be both of them uh, let's talk about this too see this got pretty tore up that's not great. Um, I'm debating machining a new piston for this. It's it's in kind of rough shape. I mean, you see all this, all that pitting on there? That's not good. That's a sign of something being in there that this was actually hitting up against. Um, I don't I don't like that. It's not a big deal. It's not going to affect the way it works, but this could. Um, 
So we'll get this all, I'll get this cleaned up a little bit more. And I may actually just make a new piston for this. But it's got some grooves in it. And then the other side of that, this is more of a problem. But in here, it's going to be really hard to show you this. Maybe if I shine a light on it. Where is it? Uh, right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. But there's some some grooving and a little like burr actually inside of that pipe. Now, that is a problem. There, see that little thing? That's not dirt on there. That's actually in the wall of the pipe. Now, I will hone that out, but there is just a... I mean, you can feel it. There are some grooves in there. So I'll, I'll hone this out and get it the best I can. But there's another spot right there. That little shiny spot, you see that? Does the light help? Yeah, it does. Anyway, that's something to watch for is the inside of that, um, the inside of this cylinder here, you know, that's what your seal rides against. So if you leave those burrs and stuff in there, you put a new cylinder or you put a new seal on the piston and then shove it in there, it's going to just cut it and tear it up immediately. So I'll use a hone and clean that up the best I can, but, um, it's probably always going to leak a little bit because those grooves are still in there. So it's never going to just stay up forever, but I think we can do a lot better than what it is right now. It does have some grooving in there, which, like I said, there was something had gotten inside of that, that system in the oil somehow. I'm not sure. Not sure. I, I don't know how old this thing is. I don't know how, how it's been used and stuff. Um, one other thing I was going to mention, you know, this. I'm showing it to you like that. And there's a couple little pieces here. But this is all that came out. All of this is missing. Most of it anyway. Whenever I took this apart, that means it's in the line set somewhere. So before we put this back together, I'm going to pull the uh, quick necks off of the ends of the hoses. And hopefully we find a bunch of orange crap caught in there. If not, that means it's in the tractor itself, in the hydraulic system, which is not ideal. Um, the good news on my tractor and my neighbor's tractor, the one that was actually pulling this uh, plow, is that the filter is on the suction side of the pump. So... At least it can't get in the pump because <laughs> it'll catch it in that five micron filter for sure but uh yeah i mean i'll probably just go ahead and buy her a uh, hydraulic filter we can change that filter and then i want to cut it open and see if we find a bunch of orange stuff in there because my suspicion is that we would so yeah okay anyway there it is so then get online uh for o-rings McMaster car is probably where I would buy them. Now they're going to come in like a five pack or a 10 pack, or sometimes for these smaller ones, probably like a 50 pack. You're going to get way more than you need, but it'll be like five bucks. And, uh, these probably be about the same way. And then you got them though. Just put a label on them, stick them on the shelf. One more thought on this. I just thought of as I was sitting here. Um, if you were looking at this and you don't have the ability to machine a new piston and, uh, you don't, you aren't confident in the, the seal on the uh, the, uh, the actual cylinder here because of those burrs in it. And so you decide that you just want to replace this. There's just a few things that you'll need to, to know. And again, this is fairly obvious. Um, just thought it'd be worth mentioning. But the first thing that you'll need to know is the diameter of this piston. And it's, you know, sort of obvious why. But, um, you know, your pressure, this would be, this is the backside, right? So the, the gland end of the cylinder. And this is the rod end of the, or the piston rather. Um, so your, your pressure comes in here and it's pushing against, you know, this surface. So, you know, it's just the way hydraulics work. If you have 3000 PSI and it's pushing on one square inch of hydraulic piston, then you have 3000 pounds of force. If you have that same 3000 PSI pushing on six inches, um, then you have 18,000 pounds of force, right? So it's multiplied. So this has to be the same in order for the force that the cylinder actually puts out to be the same as, as this cylinder. So in this case, I think it was, it was three and a half inches. And so you could figure that out fairly easy. You know, it's th three and a half uh, squared times pi divided by four. That'll give you the area of this and then multiply that by whatever the working pressure of your tractor is. And that's how many pounds of force this puts out. You don't have to do all that math. Um, to figure that out, just, just understand that uh, this 
the diameter of this piston needs to be, or of the new one, needs to be the same as the um, as this one. Uh, so whenever you're shopping for a cylinder, this will be this measurement will be called the bore of the cylinder. The next thing that you'll need, of course, is the stroke, how long the thing is, and that's, I mean, pretty obvious. I think if it's too short, then it's literally too short it can't do the job if it's too long then it's not going to fit in the space right so stroke you need to have the same stroke so just measure that uh, you can measure that by simply um, reassembling the cylinder empty no oil in it and just squish it all the way down and measure like pin to pin the holes at the bottom hole at the top on the yokes that connect to the thing pull it all the way out and then take that measurement the difference between those is your stroke so you'll need to know those two things the other thing that is just as important, but may not be as obvious, is the size of the rod. Okay, so uh, like I said, you think about the pressure being applied here to this side, you have this entire diameter that pressure is being applied to. And there's a nut and stuff on here, but you can still push against that. And so that's, it's just this area, that's, that's the entire area. On this side, however, there's a rod in the middle of it, right? And so the area that your pressure can actually push on is what's called the annular area around the rod. Think about like a donut, right? Because this space here, uh, the pressure can't push against it because there's, there's a rod in the way, right? Sort of makes sense. And so it, it's actually, this side will always be a little bit weaker than the other side. But if you get a, um, a new piston or a new cylinder and the rod is bigger, then it decreases that even more. So now, if you don't change both of them especially but even if you do you're going to have less available force in the uh, retract direction of the uh, cylinder right and if, if you leave one of these in service and replace one of them if this is bigger then you have unequal loading unequal force being applied to each cylinder um, because of the way those are connected together it's still going to work correctly but what you might run into you might find that you're breaking those plow bolts that I replaced uh, frequently. And that's because one cylinder is just pushing harder than the other. The other side effect of, of changing the uh, rod size is that since there's less volume inside of this part of the cylinder, then this will try to extend faster, right? Because it's got the same supply of oil, the same pressure with the same flow rate from the pump on the, on the tractor, but it has less volume to fill up because the rod's bigger, taking up more space in there. So, this will try to move faster, but with less force, and the other side will be moving slower, but with more force. Or if this is still strong enough, this will um, overpower the other cylinder, right? It'll outrun it, and it'll actually um, draw a cavity of vacuum inside of the other cylinder, which is not ideal. Um, so you don't want that. So that's, that's kind of the main reason that you want the uh, rod to be the same size. The other thing, which is more obvious, is you may have to take the yoke off of your old cylinder and put it on the new one. And so if the rod's the wrong size, then it may uh, may not, uh, you may not be able to attach it. So that's sort of obvious. And that leads me to the last thing that is also pretty obvious. Uh, you'll need to look at the how the your old cylinder is attached. You know, these ones have yokes with pins through them. You'll need to measure the diameter of the pin and... Uh, you know, figure that out. They don't have to be exactly the same as that, but it needs to fit the same sort of profile, right? The same shape in order to fit on your machine. So, and then lastly with the rod, sizing, you know, if it's too small and you put too much force on it, you, you'll bend the, bend the rod potentially and ruin your brand new cylinder. So that'd be a bad day uh, as well. Hercules seals. So, wanna go to seals, parent categories. They have the kits option and entire cylinders and all kinds of stuff. Um, if they have a kit for your machine, I go inch. Forgive my internet here. That's why it takes me a long time to get videos uploaded. Internet sucks out here. I've actually got pretty good connection here. So piston seals, we'll need one of them. Different kind of piston seals, but this will be the kind we need. This uh, the yellow and black one there. Uh, rod seals will be this inch. U seals here, probably, or maybe actually the one right above it. Rod U seals. Okay. Wipers, we'll start there. They have O rings as well. They have good master sets too. So as you scroll through here, there's a bunch of different options. So you just look at your wiper that you take out of whatever it is you take out and 
you know, see which one looks like it. If you look at this one right here, the CWN wiper rings, the black spot on the outside, that indicates metal. And if you look at these rod wipers, they have metal on that outside piece. So that's one that we need. And this other, that yellow one down there, metal, but it's a different shape. But you can generally kind of look at it and tell what it is. And this is your nominal ID, which is inch and an eighth, because that's the rod size. And we only have one of them, so there it is. Um, I think. I don't know if I've had this. Two of those. All right, and so they are. Yeah. So I did this earlier. I've been playing with the screen record thing. I, I didn't know I could do this. Um, so I measured the groove width, which is this D measurement here, to be um, 407 on mine and this says 410 so that's within reason uh, let's see here piston diameter 3.497 that's about right so about three and a half and here once again we're filter nominal id inch and eight uh oh okay maybe not not an option. Well, run into that sometimes. So let's look at this. This one here. Now, and it's like I said earlier, these don't have to be exact matches as long as they fit in space and everything works. Here's an instance of that. Hopefully, this one will have one that we need. Well, that's a problem. So, okay, that, that's what's kind of frustrating. Have to keep applying the filter. That's why I remember it being kind of a pain to deal with here. This thing, 316, so that ought to be good. But it's got the sharp corners. Oh, okay. So see, they show this in as a rod seal and as a piston seal. But remember how I was talking about the... Uh, the direction of these is important so you can see where it's shown on a piston here there's two of them facing opposite directions that way it seals from both sides versus the one on the rod here you can see it's only facing um, the, the blind end of the cylinder right because that's where the pressure is coming from and that little bitty gap you know right above there that would be where a rod wiper would go so anyway there you go they face kind of away from each other or if you had a piston that had two of these on there, you know, they would face away from each other. So, let's see if they got one of these. Quarter in. Sixteenths, going the wrong way. Three sixteenths, okay. All of these the same. Dimensions here: three sixteenths heights, inch and a half OD, inch and an eighth ID. That fit, and it's way cheaper. Yeah, it's only six dollars. <laughs> 